Thanks everybody for joining the call. Today we have a special call, a special guest. I will introduce him a little bit later. I just want to hear from you who are the first time on this call with me. So I, I have done now this a couple of times, those training sessions about local team check. Type enter and yes if you are the first time on this call. Okay, I see a couple of yeses, so let me introduce me quickly if needed. So my name is Jack Hotman. I'm 51 years old. My specialty is Google AdWords and I serve many clients by myself with AdWords management mainly. And all my tools are geared to that. So that's my specialism. So I think that's at this point all what you need to know that uh, I do this for my own business and I'm willing to share my knowledge and results with you. So if you have been in the Facebook group you probably have seen this post. Um, so I, I, I got an, uh, I think a, a message and she said you know I, I sent 60 letters uh, to clients and if you are on the on, on the uh, webinar let me know you, 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 you might want to sh share by yourself but I just copy and paste was in the Facebook group oh I'm here Mark do you want to uh, sh share by yourself and uh, do you have a an, um, a microphone with you no it's okay okay so so he Mark is on the line so it's foolproof so he said he, he shared I sent 60 letters to prospects and later on he, he shared it was dentist and I believe landscaping landlord I believe so from those 60 letters he got five clients 60 letters I think it doesn't take you more than an hour he got five clients so this result is uh, this letter is in the membership side so it's copy and paste okay so it's everybody can do this on this call but the interesting thing was to me because I'm always looking for a recurring payment I don't care so much about initial payments but I go for the recurring element and Mark said one I charge him $99 for uh, monthly and one of the things that I'm going to charge is doing his Google business page so it's more than coincidental this all hot you know this, this just happened the last couple of days and we scheduled this training on Sunday because in my vision the order is you need a good website the website is where you get the contact with the business. The second thing is you do Google business page. So they get, they see results, they get calls. And once they doing well, you're going to provide Google AdWords. Today, we're going to do an in-depth training of Google base pages, Google business page. Who likes to have that training? Who likes to get trained from Paul James? He is actually, and this is also very uh, uh, spontaneous. Is Quack on the line? Quack Johnson. So Quack Johnson posted in the Facebook group. Jack, I just want to say you have an amazing product here with local team Jack and. Uh, so glad I made the choice to jump into the enterprise package. This Facebook is one of the most active products I have been quack. Okay, and actually I had an other testimonial which say uh, I uh, have followed Paul James training and I'm excited. To, uh, I, I have seen results. Uh, so I haven't put it on the on the web on the on, the, on this presentation. Ocean, uh, was that you? I forgot. I put the wrong uh, Amazon. 
Okay. So anyhow, Google Business Expert Paul jo Paul James is live on the call, and with that said, um, I'm going to mute my salad because he knows more about Google Business than me, and he's more than able to um, to um, to explain all the details. Okay. So the recording has started. If everything goes well, hopefully we can send the replay out. But for now, listen. You know, put your TV off. Listen because every word can make a change in your life. Paul, welcome. Thanks a lot, Jack. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to need to grab the screen control from you. Okay. I will accept if I see something comes up. Okay, can, can everyone see my screen? Just give me a quick one in the chat box if you can see my screen. Awesome, okay, cool. Awesome, we should be good. Thanks a lot, Jack. I, I really appreciate you bringing me in to, uh, to give this Google training. Uh, you see I've got Google Plus Local on my screen. That's what it used to be called, and it still kind of connects with Google Plus, but they're referring to it now as Google My Business. So that's the first thing I'll address. How many people have seen that? Let's put another one in the chat box if you've seen Google My Business before. You may have seen it referred to as Google Places in the past. Okay, yeah, lots of ones. Awesome. So for those who haven't heard of it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain it. We're going to demystify all of that in this call today. Lots of ones coming in. Awesome. Cool. So I'll give you just a quick background on myself. Um, I'll just do the very quick version. And uh, we'll jump right in. I don't, like to, uh, I don't like to mess around. I like to get right into the training. But um, just so you know who I am, if we haven't met yet, I'd just like to give you a, a brief introduction. So that's me. I'm Paul James. I'm 26 years old from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, I've been doing internet marketing full time for about four years now. And uh, my specialty is really local marketing. And I like to work with local business owners and just help them get a better, um, you know, better online presence and help them get leads uh, using the internet. So that's kind of my specialty. Um, so quick disclaimer I want to get out of the way, um, you know, the, the legality stuff. I'm going to be talking about a lot of numbers and showing various things that I've been able to accomplish. And I'm by no means saying that my results are average or typical or that you're going to be able to achieve the same results because, after all, I don't know you, I don't know your work ethic, and I don't know your current experience level. But that being said, I've got a lot of awesome training for you, and I think you're going to get a lot out of this if you take action on this and uh, implement what I'm about to share with you. So now that that's out of the way, I just want to give you a brief background kind of, of where I started and where I've been and kind of how quickly that happened so that you really understand the, um, the potential in this. So four years ago, this is the car I was driving. It was a 93 Nissan Maxima. You can see my name's on the back of it. That was my old Twitter handle. And um, I was living in my brother's garage at the time. But um, before that, I was working at an HVAC shop, and that's kind of how my um, experience came in with the local business. I got my start there early cutting the grass, and I would be cleaning up the shop and stuff like that. And every once in a while, one of the employees would call in sick, and I'd get to go out and help them carry a furnace in the basement or something like that. Real fun, right? Yeah, well, I ended up learning the ropes, though, so it was kind of a good thing that it happened. Um, I learned how to do the sheet metal and learned how to do those, you know, the PVC pipes on it. And I eventually became the foreman and was training people and all that kind of good stuff. Basically, I worked my way up in the company and eventually worked my way up into the office, which you know, was answering phones and doing accounts payable, accounts receivable, all that kind of stuff. And it kind of put me on the other side of the spectrum. You know, marketers were always you know, marketing to other people, but I was on the other side of the spectrum. I was actually being marketed too, so I kind of saw what worked and what didn't. A lot of times people would call up and you know, they would just have awful pitches and I'd just hang up on them. And, um, you know, that's kind of what I was instructed to do. So anyways, work out slow. I got laid off. Happens a lot here in Wisconsin because it's either when, when fall and spring comes, it's just not really cold enough yet to turn on the furnace and not hot enough to uh, turn on the AC. So it was, it was typical to get laid off, but this time it was just kind of really bad and it, it didn't look like I was coming back. So anyways, to make a long story short, I uh, gathered the opinion of friends and family and they all said I should go back to school, so I decided to enroll in nursing school, and uh, I figured you know I could get done 
pretty quick. Um, two years, get an associate's degree, and hopefully get a decent job as a nurse. Meanwhile, my passion kept me going. You've got to have a passion that, that drives you through, and for me, that was music. That's me on the left playing guitar there um, in one of the bands that I was in. So I was online all the time promoting my music, right? And this is when Destiny came calling, because I wasn't really looking for it, but I happened to come across a Make Money Online ad, and uh, you know, it just really kind of struck a chord with me. I was a little bit skeptical by it, obviously. You know, when someone, when someone ha puts an ad in front of you and says you can make money sitting in your underwear at home, you know, you really are like, what? But <laughs> I decided to bite at it, though, anyways. I figured, you know, I'm already pretty much in debt with this school. I was actually $35,000 in debt from, from going to college. And uh, I figured, you know, what, do I, what have I got to lose? So I did that, and um, the product actually was, was pretty decent. I liked it a lot. It was a product on SEO. Taught me how to build one-page blogs and rank them on the first page of Google for affiliate marketing stuff. And uh, I decided to focus on a topic that I was doing in school. It was actually anatomy and physiology. And it's just the study of the human body. But there was a lot of memorization and stuff. I found a ClickBank product that uh, sold these little flashcards that helped people learn about anatomy and physiology. And I put it up on the blog, and lo and behold, I got bit by the bug. I started making a little bit of money with that. Still own the site to this day, and I still make some money on it, so it's kind of cool. Um, it's kind of nostalgic. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it just for that reason. But that's not really where I made all my money. Um, what happened was I kind of got creative because you know the mu musician inside of me kind of came out and thought, okay, what can I do to really grow this? And that's when I got the idea to start working with local businesses. And I figured if I can rank these little one-page affiliate sites on the first page of Google, why not do the same thing with local businesses, particularly with the maps listings, Google My Business is when things really got interesting. So what I did to learn this, because you know, obviously dealing with Google My Business or Google Places, it was called back then, quite a bit different than doing affiliate marketing. So I went back to the HVAC company I worked for, and I said, look, I've got this new thing I'm doing, and I've done it with my, my school stuff, and it worked out really well with the anatomy and physiology blog. I'd like to try it with you, but I really don't know what I'm doing, so it's kind of going to be a test. And I ask that you'll be my guinea pig for this. And if it works out great, and uh, you, know, you can decide to pay me whatever you want afterwards, we can work something out later. But if it doesn't, you know, no harm, no foul, at least we try it. So I did it, and uh, it worked. We saw some killer results with it. Uh, the company actually wanted to hire me back because they were uh, booming with business again. But um, I came to a turning point in the road here. And I figured at this point I had three options. Option number one was, you know, I could go and finish nursing school and become a nurse. But I realized I'd face the next challenge of finding a job. And at this time, people really weren't hiring in my area for what nurses really should be paid. Um, the wages just kind of seemed to be driving down, it seemed like. Um, the other thing I could do was I could say the music thing. Um, you know, that was my passion, but I just really wasn't making much money at it. Uh, I was I had a lot of fans, but it just wasn't producing the money. So the third option I chose, obviously, was to go after this local marketing, and specifically the Google Maps thing is where I really focused on. And um, I just saw a massive growth. Uh, I remember the first client I picked up who was like the first real legitimate client was the... Uh, the dentist. I went into the dentist one day, and I uh, was just telling them kind of about what I did, and you know they wanted a piece of it. So that's what I did. I started working with the dentist. I was able to buy a, a new house, swapped out the car for uh, you know an SUV, and uh, things just took off. So I'm not showing this stuff to brag. I'm just showing you you know what's possible when you apply yourself and you take action, and that's exactly what I did. And and I did this. I did this in three years actually. This photo was from last year. But anyways, let's get into the good stuff. Let's get into the Google Maps and how this stuff can really work to uh, get you guys a nice recurring income, but more importantly, get the business owners more business because you know, that karma comes back at you when you're providing really good service and you're helping grow their business. Uh, I'm a big believer in karma. So I have some interesting statistics on there. You can feel free to kind of browse through them, but I've highlighted uh, just a few of them that I think are important. One of them is 85% of consumers search for local businesses online, so that's pretty crazy. But more importantly, the Maps listings is just the best lead generator I've ever seen. It's like word of mouth on steroids. Um, let's talk about mobile. Google Plus Local or Google My Business shows up on mobile devices, uh, which is incredibly important. 
Uh, Google said in 2012, and I'm sure this number has grown since then, but um, they said in 2012 that 50% of mobile searches are for local places of interest. So that's pretty crazy. But let's talk about what it means for you. Well, it's big money. We charge our clients on average $1,000 per month to maintain their listing and to keep them ranked. And, and I'll explain to you how I get that fee every month and how I keep them paying. Um, we also, in some cases, charge them a $1,500 one-time setup fee because of the extensive work we have to do to get them set up and ranked initially. So if you add that up, you're looking at approximately six figures with just around eight clients per year. How many people here think they can handle taking on eight clients? Give me some ones in the chat box if you think you can handle eight clients. Okay, lots of ones. Awesome. So there's one rule I want to tell you about. And if you have a notepad or a pen, you should definitely write this down. There's an address rule that you have to follow. You cannot you know, neglect this rule. And that is you cannot use P.O. boxes when it comes to dealing with Google My Business. You have to have a real physical address, okay? So no P.O. boxes if, if the person works from their home, like they have a home-based business. Um, it's possible that you can use their home address and hide the address from the search results so that people aren't coming to their house. But you cannot use a P.O. box. I know a lot of people ask that and uh, just not possible. So make sure you write that down, no P.O. boxes. Okay, so let's take a poll. And I'm really interactive in these things if you haven't noticed. I like to, I like to get your guys' feedback. So I appreciate um, you guys answering in the chat box and stuff. We got a lot of people answering. So if I pull up this listing here, I came in here and typed in dentist. And you'll notice, maybe I'll make this a little, little bit bigger for you. I'm on a 27-inch monitor, so everything looks kind of smaller on the webinar, I know. So I'm going to make things bigger for you. Just let me know if they're ever hard to read. So you notice I just typed in dentist. I didn't type in my area. Um, you'll notice it's pulling Cedarburg, Wisconsin. So the reason why I didn't have to type in my area is because Google Tracks is based on your IP address. So I'm not actually in Cedarburg, um, so why did it pull up Cedarburg? Well, I came into this search tools right here, and there's a drop-down box where you can enter your location in. So I'm actually in West Bend, Wisconsin, but I wanted to pull up the results for Cedarburg uh, just to show you an example. So you could come in here and you could type in any um, area that you want because realistically when most people are searching, they just type in the word dentist. They don't type in dentist Cedarburg. And some people will and they still will pull up results, but a lot of people won't. So it's pretty cool that Google does this. So this is the Google Maps listings right here that you're looking at. They're marked by these map markers, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you're going to hear me refer to Google Places, Google Plus Local, Google My Business interchangeably. But just know that they're all the same thing. Google keeps changing the name of this thing over and over and over again. It's like they're just never satisfied with the name. So I normally just call them either local listings or maps listings because I know that they're going to keep changing the name over and over again on us. But I want to get you guys' opinion here. If you were, let's say you had a cavity or your tooth hurt, and you needed to get into the dentist right away, maybe you're new to the area, right? Maybe you, you just moved into Cedarburg. You don't have a dentist that you go to or that you're familiar with. If you were looking at this search result, you came into Google, pu punched in dentist, and you hit search, which one of these listings do you think you would maybe call or go into or maybe look into just a little bit further? A, B, C, D, E, F, or G? Just put the letter in the chat box. I'm kind of curious to see what everyone says. Okay, overwhelmingly everyone is saying D. Okay, so why did you guys say D versus A, who's number one? Okay, yep, the ratings, the star ratings everyone's saying. So I just wanted to, to show you that if you can find low-hanging fruit niches, which you can, it's very easy. I find these types of things all the time where everyone on the first page isn't flooded with these five-star ratings, like, like this one's a perfect example, you can still dominate without being number one. You just need to get them into this seven-pack somewhere. Although Bell Orthodontic, which is Matt Marker D, although they're not number one, I can almost bet that they're getting 95% of the calls that come in from here. So keep that in mind. That's just something to really think of. You don't have to get them number one. You just have to get them here somewhere. And going after those low-hanging fruit niches is a way to really ensure that they see an awesome conversion rate. So these star ratings are triggered by five reviews usually we're seeing. It used to be 10, but now they switched it to five. So 
you, know, you can come in here, get a listing, and, and put five reviews up, and you're going to get that star rating. So when it comes to picking out a niche, this is one thing I look for. I look for the low-hanging fruit, people who aren't saturated with five-star ratings. So if I start to see that there's like more than four people on this seven-pack that have you know, a star rating, then I start to maybe look somewhere else. And, and it's not to say that these strategies won't work and won't rank you for other listings that are more competitive, but it, it's just to say that it's easier. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to do any more work than I have to, and I want to make it as easy as possible. Plus, it's easier to maintain. Oftentimes, when we come after niches like this and we get them ranked, we don't have to do anything else. I, I mean, I have customers I haven't touched in years, and I'm still getting that recurring monthly income on it. I'll explain why, um, but but just keep that in mind. All right. Yes, John, this is live. Okay. Jimmy asked a cool question that I wanted to answer. Jimmy's asking, how long does it take to rank in the seven pack? Um, that's a good question, and it really is going to vary based on the industry you come into, um, the competition, and the location. But on average, after you get the listing verified, which I'm going to show you how to do, on average, we're seeing about three weeks. So it, it just varies. Okay, cool. So that being said, the other thing you want to keep in mind is you want to pick out a niche that obviously pulls up a seven pack, because not all niches do. Um, and, and sometimes they'll pull up three packs, like they'll only show three listings, or they'll only show five listings, but as long as they show something. So, you know, if it shows three listings, that's still okay to go after. But if I were to come in here and type in, I'm um, trying to think of something that maybe wouldn't pop up. Um, let's see. Maybe graphics. I don't know. You know, graphics not pulling up anything. Oh, actually it is. These 7-packs are pulling up for some categories that weren't showing up before, which is kind of cool. But the bottom line is, is if you type in something, we'll just do the, uh, the old basket weaving, right? That's the classic example everyone uses. If you type in basket weaving, you don't see any 7-pack or 3-pack or 5-pack. So this wouldn't be something we would go after if we were interested in the, in the Google My Business stuff. So keep that in mind. You want to see those listings at least. Okay, so let's talk about researching, right? You take on a new client and you need to start researching that client and seeing exactly where you need to start. You need to claim the page and you need to verify it or take over um, the manager position of the page. So you do this from this URL. It's google.com. I'll type this in the chat box, but you might want to write it down too. Google.com forward slash business. Okay? And that's going to take you to a page I'll type it in. Mine's going to look different, probably. Okay, yeah, so mine looks different. But normally, once you sign into a Gmail account, and I recommend setting this up on a separate Gmail account. So every time I work with a new client, I set them up on a separate Gmail account. But once you sign in, it's going to take you to this page. Mine just doesn't because I've already got a client on this particular account. So that's why uh, it took me to a different page. So from this page, you're given a few different options. You're given storefront, service area, and brand. Now, brand we're typically going to ignore. Uh, we're more interested in storefront and service area. So you need to kind of decide off the bat what type of client you're working with. So storefront, they've got some examples here, you know, retail, restaurant, hotel. Other things would be like dentists, chiropract, chiropractors, um, doctors, right? Because people are going into the location to get the work performed. Service area, on the other hand, they've got some good examples like plumber, pizza delivery, taxi service. Um, other examples would be like HVAC, contractor, plumbers, electricians, right? They're coming out to the customer's location. So you need to choose which type of business you're working with. I'll just choose service area for this example. And then you're going to be presented with this option, okay? Uh, you need to start looking for the business and seeing what kind of listing they have or if they don't have any. So I'm going to go through the three different scenarios that you're going to often see, and um, I'll show you basically how this works. So you can either search by their name, their address, or the phone number. And for this example, I've pre-researched some phone numbers to pick out these specific examples that I wanted to show you. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you, I'm going to type in the phone number here. This is a business that is already created and they've already claimed their listing, okay? So it's a Mexican restaurant, 
And if I click on it, notice what it says. Someone else has already verified this listing. This listing has, been, has already been verified by another user. If you want to add this listing to your account, you can make a request that we've sent to the current verified user. And then you hit this blue button. So what's going to happen is they're going to get an email in their inbox that's going to basically say, you know, hey, Paul James asked us to give him permission to have administration rights over your account. Do you want to allow this? If so, click the link. They click the link, and now your account's able to manage it. So this is one that we see, um, and that's pretty much the end of it. It's pretty straightforward. So that's one scenario you're going to see. The other scenario you're going to see, I'm going to type in another phone number, is looks the same, right? But when we click on the business, it says, okay, we need to create a Google Plus page so you can manage your business on Google. Please confirm this location. And we check that we're authorized to manage the business, and we hit continue. So don't do this before you have a client, because otherwise you're you know, claiming someone else's listing. But I'm going to do it for the purpose of demonstration so you see the process. And then I'll delete it from my account later. So here's what happens. They're saying, okay, we want to make sure that you're the person in charge. So we're going to need to verify your listing. And they've given us two options. And sometimes you'll see three options. Um, but in this case, we're seeing two. There's an option to call. And if they have this same phone number still, um, all you need to do is get a hold of your client and say, uh, you know, hey, um, I'm going to have Google give you a PIN number. And uh, you just call me back with that PIN number, and then we'll get your listing verified. So you can do it that way. Otherwise, you can have the code sent out through mail. And this is one we see pretty commonly, where they only give the, uh, the mail option. OK, so I'm just looking through questions really quick. All right, so now we're going to go over the next example. And that postcard, by the way, takes about one to two weeks to uh, get in the mail. So, okay, the next example, and this one we see a lot too. This is one of the more common ones that we see. All right, it says we couldn't find it, right? Your business isn't listed here. So we're going to click this little button that says I've correctly entered it. And now we're going to be able to create our listing on this page. All right, so let's go through this. This is exactly how you create a listing. Um, you know, from scratch. So type in the business's name, or just say for this example, it's Bob's HVAC. You know, select your country, select the street address. All right, so we'll put 123 Water Street. Now, I said you can't use PO boxes, but I know a lot of times um, business owners are in office buildings and they have suite numbers. So that's fine. Spell out either the whole word suite and then put their suite number on the second line. Otherwise, put the number sign. Either way is fine. For this example, I'll just leave it blank. Type in the city, the state, and the zip code. All right, and we'll punch in the phone number. OK, so there we go. We're, we're all entered in there. And I'm going to have to zoom out just a little bit on the screen. It's just getting cut off a little bit. OK, so there's a couple other options category, which is very important. So at this stage, I normally have a notepad sitting next to me because while we're waiting for that postcard to come in the mail, I like to do some category research. It's important for when we're building out the website, which we're going to talk about today as well. So what I like to do at this stage is I like to start typing in phrases that I think people would think of when they think of you know, HVAC. Or if you're working with an accountant, then you would type in phrases that you think people would type in when they're thinking of an accountant. OK, so in this case, I I'll just start with HVAC. So I start typing it in. And I only got to HVA. And you can see I'm presented with a drop-down box. So in that drop-down box, we see we've got HVAC contractor. So this is a category that Google has available for us. And sometimes you'll see several. So what you want to do is you want to write down on a notepad or something every category that's applicable to you. So HVAC contractor. In the case of Bob's HVAC, it's definitely applicable, so I would write that down. Um, the other thing that comes to mind, an HVAC, HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, if you didn't know that. So I'll go ahead and type in heating. That comes to mind. OK, so I've got three in this example, heating contractor, 
heating equipment supplier and heating oil supplier. So maybe in this case, only heating contractor fits. So I'll write that down on my notepad as well. Okay, let's do uh, air conditioning. Okay, so we got two, air conditioning contractor, air conditioning repair service. I think both accurately describe um, the company I'm working with. So I'm gonna write those both down. Okay, let's type in furnace. Okay, so we got furnace parts supplier, furnace repair service, and furnace store. So I'll write down uh, furnace repair service. That fits good. Okay, so this is what I do. I just go through all the categories. At this stage, they're only going to let you select one. So just pick one that's, you know, kind of a broad overview of everything. So I'll just do HAC contractor. And then once we have the listing set up, we can come back in and we can add the rest in. But it's important that we write them all down now so that we can build out the website. Okay, so you see this option here. I deliver goods and services to my customers at their location. So yeah, that accurately describes an HVAC company. If it didn't, then I would uncheck it, but it does. So we'll leave it checked and we're gonna hit continue. Okay, so we have another box here. We can enter in each zip code that the, our company services like this. Okay, we can add them each in individually or a much faster way, if you're able to do this, is you can enter in a radius. You can say, okay, well, Bob's HVAC um, delivers or services customers within a 20 mile radius of their business. Awesome. And then we've got one option left. I also serve customers at my business address. So this would be good for example, like a flower shop, right? They're having people come in and buy flowers and arrangements for special occasions like Valentine's Day and stuff but they also are delivering flowers for like funerals and, and weddings and things, right? And, and to regular people too, I guess. Um, so they would check both, right? They would check both of these. But in Bob's HAC case, I'm not gonna check it. Uh, they don't have anyone coming in. So we're gonna hit continue. And now it looks kind of like the last one, right? They're asking us to create the page, select that we're authorized, and we'll hit continue that we are authorized. All right, they're, they're setting up Google My Business for us. Okay, so we only have the option here to mail the code. And it says one to two weeks. Uh, usually we're seeing it at the two week phase. Um, but sometimes we'll see it in a week. But if we click this, you see it's gonna send us a postcard in the mail. We can put it to attention Robert, the owner of Bob's HVAC if we want. And we're just gonna tell him, hey, look out for this postcard coming in the mail because we need this to verify the listing and it's very important to, to get this to us. Um, and we have them give us a pin and then we can come back in and get it all verified. But that doesn't mean that in the meantime we're gonna be just sitting back. In fact, we've got some work to do on the website. So I'm gonna take a quick couple minutes here to run through the chat box. And if you have questions from this last section that we covered, go ahead and put them in there. And um, of course, if you think of anything later on, I'll, I'll do stops you know, every once in a while uh, after we finish an individual section, I'll answer some questions and then we'll keep going. How do service area businesses get in the seven pack? Is there a disadvantage for service area businesses? No disadvantage at all, Doug. Um, Google knows what the address is, so perfectly fine. Okay, um, Jimmy, you have two listings. So that's gonna be a problem. You're gonna want to delete one of those listings because you don't wanna have duplicate listings. Google treats listings much like they do duplicate content on a website. Like for example, you know, you always hear that quality content is important. Well, if you copy content from another website, you know, you could get hit with the duplicate content penalty. Well, the same goes for the Google My Business stuff. So if you have duplicate listings, you should claim them both, and then you can go back in and delete them. I'll show you how to delete it actually. Let me come back into the, uh, to the google.com forward slash business tab. Okay, so I've got a couple of them in here now now that I, I showed you guys examples, but you would want to claim them all, all the duplicates, and then you come into where it says manage this page, come into the little gear icon here, hit settings, and then scroll down to the bottom and it says delete page. Okay, it's gonna give us a, a warning box. We're gonna click delete, I have to enter my password again. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna check all these boxes. I want them all deleted. Okay, and that's it. 
see it's gone. So make sure you only do that on the one that you don't want. So you don't want duplicate listings, definitely want to delete one of them. Okay, Mike, if you want to hide the address, then that would be selecting a service area business and making sure that you don't select that customers can come into your location. As long as you don't tell Google that customers can come to your location, your address will be hidden. And I think you saw this, um, maybe you didn't see this. Let me, let me see if I can find anyone. Some people still have their addresses to showing. But here, this one's a perfect example. See JJ's Plumbing Repair, they're ranked number one. And all it says is Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Okay, so some of these plumbers probably have showrooms and stuff, so they probably left their address on there. Okay, Greg says lots of info so far. Thanks, Greg. Um, no, you cannot use the physical address of the post office. I suppose you could try it, but um, I would be prepared to get your listing suspended because I don't think a, a strategy like that's going to last very long. I think Google will catch on to that. So if it were me, I wouldn't do it. Okay. Just going through more questions here. No, Google doesn't charge for this, David. This is a free service that Google provides, which is why I really like it. Um, one of the advantages of showing up here is that I think people understand that you're showing up here because you're the most relevant versus, you know, the pay-per-click ads you're, you're paying to show up there. So I think that has kind of an allure to it, that you're showing up there organically. Um, so not everyone cares, but some people I think care about that. But it's cool to get that free traffic, for sure. To not have to pay for pay-per-click is, I think, is pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm going to keep going, and we'll take questions at the end as well. So if I missed your question, don't worry, we'll come back to it. But I just want to make sure we keep, keep on plugging through. So you noticed in here we entered in phone numbers. And I do recommend that you get set up with a tracking phone number when you work with a client. And when you do set up a tracking phone number, um, that means you're going to have to go through all of their citations and update them so that your tracking phone number shows. And uh, basically, a tracking phone number is, is simple. For those who don't know, it's basically you buy a phone number. They usually run you a couple dollars a month. And you forward that phone number. You own it, but you forward it off to your business that you're working with. And what it does is it tracks when people call. It tracks how long they stayed on the phone for. Um, and, and it just tracks all of that data. So you're able to export a report that shows how many calls they got every month and prove to them that the system is working. So I know Jack's got a, a call tracking portal. Um, maybe Jack can throw a link to that in the, uh, in the chat box for anyone who, who doesn't know about that. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to get tracking phone numbers on board for this because I think it's really important. So definitely keep that in mind when you're setting this up. Um, but one thing I like to do before I, I finalize the purchase of the tracking phone number, and I'd like to pop in and make sure that I can get one in the right area code. And sometimes people will even let you, um, tracking platforms will even let you pick exactly like the first three digits of the phone number. Like for example, instead of just picking the 262 area code, sometimes they'll let you pick you know, the first three numbers too. So if they let you do that, I normally like to go and search the city that I'm working in, like West Bend, Wisconsin. I normally like to go to the city's website and under departments, under administration usually is where it is, you can find exactly what the area code and for, phone number should be. You know? And if you plug this in, they might not have exactly that available, but usually they'll find you one that's really close to that area. And then one other thing that I like to do too, just to be extra sure, is I like to do a Google search for that phone number. So, and I don't know what's going to pop up. This is just a random phone number. But the reason why is I like to make sure there's no other businesses that maybe have had this phone number in the past. So it doesn't look like it. I mean, if you see these little directory sites, they basically just have, um, you know, the same, this, they have every possible phone number combination that exists and they just list it in their directory. So, I mean, that's perfectly normal to see that. But, I mean, if I were to see, like, you know, Adam's Plumbing Services, you know, five times on this page, well, I will probably look at purchasing a different phone number because I don't want them getting, you know, those kind of calls or solicitor calls. 
So just a little tip for you, but I think that's important. Okay, so let's talk about the website. The website is really important and the website structure and all that good stuff. So you have a few different options when it comes to the website. And I'm going to tell you what I would do and what I do in every situation. And um, of course, you can you know, make a judgment call and do whatever you think fits best for your business or for the business model you want to pursue. But what I do is I always buy a brand new domain when I work with a client. So, and I brand it generically. So let me give you an example. Let's say I'm working with JJ's Plumbing Repair. So he's already got jjsplumbing.com, and that's, that's great. But the problem is, is that I don't own that domain, and I'll never own that domain. And I also don't own the Google Plus listing, okay, or the Google My Business listing. So that means virtually the only thing I own is the tracking phone number. That being said, a lot of what you do on the website controls the ranking. So if I put all kinds of work into jjsplumbing.com and JJ decides one month that he doesn't want to pay me anymore because he's already ranked on the first page now, well, I'm out of $1,000 a month. So here's what I typically do. I typically go and I buy a domain that's branded generically. Like instead of calling it, you know, jjsplumbingservices.com, I might just call it like reliableplumbingservices.com or affordableplumbingservices.com. So it's branded generically. I can still have the content on the site be specific to JJ. You know, I can still have his logo. I can still have pictures of his employees or his building. But here's the thing. That's an asset that I now own and that I'm building up for myself. And I'm leasing it to him. And this is how I get my monthly fee because he's not just paying me to rank him on the first page and keep him on the first page. He's paying me because he's leasing a website from me. Okay? And that's really the key to making sure that you have recurring payments coming in every month. It's kind of like buying you know, a condo on the lake and leasing it out to people. It's, it's the same kind of deal. So at this point, now we would own the phone number and we would own the website. And if JJ ever decided, you know, hey, I'm on the first page, I don't need you anymore, well, we just come into here, we disconnect our website from the listing, and within about three or four days, JJ is dropping off the first page because all of that work that we did on the website is no longer applicable to his listing and we just switch things around, go over to, come over to one of his competitors like Cliff Bergen and Associates and we say, hey look, um, here's call logs, we were working with JJ, getting him 30 calls per month and uh, he, he's not interested and can't handle the leads anymore, are you interested in them? Cool. And then we plug Cliff Bergen's information into the website, we connect the site into his listing, fix his citations up, and boom, we're back in business. And all of the work we put into the website doesn't go to waste. It's an asset we own. So that's how I recommend setting it up. And of course, you can choose to do it differently. You can choose, you can choose to invest your time into you know, restructuring JJ's website, but to me, it's just not worth it. I, I'd rather have a new domain. And um, you know, that's, just, that's just the way I do it. So take that for what it's worth. But that being said, uh, those are kind of your options there. Let's talk about website structuring. So structuring a website for Google My Business, is, it, it's kind of similar to regular SEO, but it's a little bit different because our level of importance is kind of different. Our importance here is showing Google that we're acknowledging their categories and we're making those kind of the priority so that we're really showing them that we're relative to their categories. So I want you to think of this chart here as each box being a separate page on the website, okay? Separate page. So here's how this works. The gray box is the home page, and I also stick my main Google Plus category in there as well. Um, but this is really just a landing page. It's the first thing they see. Every arrow that comes off, you see arrows everywhere, but every arrow is basically, um, it's signifying a link going to the next page. So on the home page, I've got three links, essentially. I've got this one, this orange one, and this orange one. Okay? So I would have three links on the home page, and they would link to my Google Plus category. So heating contractor, furnace repair service, air conditioner repair service. And we got those categories when we created the listing, remember? I told you you should always write them down on a notepad. This is why. I take one of these charts, and I have a blank one, or I just map it out on a piece of paper, and I map out what my entire website is going to look ahead of time. And these are separate silos. So here's how you should think about this. 
each silo is going to be, um, you're going to keep it basically relative to whatever, you know, whatever is up here. So if I have heating contractor up here, the other keywords that I end up picking out later on are going to be related to heating contractor. And then in this category, if it's about air conditioning, well, then these keywords are going to be about air conditioning. I'm not going to put an air conditioning keyword over under the heating category. So you want to start structuring this as in level of importance, most important being higher up and then least important being lower towards the bottom. So that's why the Google Plus categories are higher up on the chart because they're the most important. We want to show Google, hey, this is what our business is about. This is you know, your exact Google category. This is what we want to show up for. Okay, so that's what we do. And each box would essentially have you know, 300 words or so of content about the keyword. So you can go as deep as you want with these. You, know, you don't have to go three deep like I did. You could go only one deep under the heating category if you wanted, and maybe you go five deep under air conditioning. That's completely up to you and dependent on how many keywords you pick up. Um, but this is how we lay it out. And I can show you, show you a quick little one I did on paper. So HVAC contractors at the top, links to my four other categories here, my four Google Plus categories, and then those just link down into um, keywords that I picked up. Okay? Do you guys need to show me some, need me to show you some keyword research, or do you guys pretty much understand how the Google Keyword Tool works? Or do you want me to run through how I pick up keywords? Just let me know. Okay, I'll show it. Um, I saw someone ask, what is CPC? That just stands for cost per click. Okay, and I'll show you. Okay, so I mean, Jack here is, is the master at, you know, when it comes to pay-per-click traffic. Um, but I'll just explain as best as I know. I, I don't do a lot of pay-per-click traffic um, in AdWords these days, but um, I'll show you how I research keywords. I do this kind of a unique way. So I come to the Keyword Planner. This is just a free tool that Google provides. And this is just one way that I research keywords because I find when it comes to local keywords that sometimes the data in the keyword planner is not always super accurate. Like sometimes it'll say that a keyword only gets 10 searches per month and then we'll rank someone for that keyword and they'll get like 30 calls off of it that month. So I find it's not super accurate and instead I like to use a metric called CPC or cost per click. And um, if you guys have been through um, any training from Jack about pay per click, I'm sure he's explained CPC. but I'll just show you my basic understanding of it. So what I like to start by doing is I come into all locations here and I start typing in my location so uh, or the location that the business owner is in. So let's say he's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'll start with that, but then I also like to pick maybe four cities around Milwaukee, Wisconsin just to kind of get a broad overview because chances are if keywords are popular in let's say Waukesha, Wisconsin, which is, you know, 30 miles away or 20 miles away, chances are they're probably going to be good for Milwaukee too. Um, so I'm just going to type in around four different cities. So to Brookfield, to New Berlin, and you can look at the map to pick out these cities if you're not familiar with the area, but I'm from the area so I don't need to look at a map, I can just easily plug them in. Okay, so there we go. So my targeting is set. The next thing I would do is I would start typing in my Google Plus categories here. HVAC contractor, furnace repair service, air conditioning repair service. Um, let's see what else did I have? Heating contractor. And then after I um, use all of my categories up, I start just thinking of words off the top of my head that are just ideas that I think people might type in. Like I think they might type in heating and cooling. I think they might type in heating and air conditioning. I think they might type in heating companies or HVAC companies or HVAC contractor. Okay, so I would just come up with as many as I can think of, maybe like 20 or 30. And then I hit get ideas. And then keyword ideas. Okay, so let me explain to you how this is laid out. So the top box up here, what you see on the screen, this is exactly what we just typed in. 
the bottom box is by relevant. So Google says, well, because you typed in this stuff up here, we think that this stuff also might be something you, you'd be interested in looking at. So normal keyword research, I've always been told you look at average monthly searches, right, 140. So that basically means that people are typing in heating and cooling 140 times in, in these areas. That's what that would mean. And, and you could run this search a different way, too. You could run it by typing in heating and cooling Milwaukee, and then you could leave the targeting out because the Milwaukee would already be tagged on the keyword. Um, but I like to do it this way, and here's why. You see how a lot of these say 10 and they have dashes through it? I think that's just like the default that Google shows when they don't have enough data or they don't have the data. They just kind of show this like default amount. And I found a lot of times, like I said, we'll rank someone for this keyword and they'll get like 30 calls even though Google says it only gets you know, 10 monthly searches. So what I like to do is I like to look at this column. It's the suggested bid. Um, and I wrote it on my sheet as cost per click or CPC. But here's what this means. This is my understanding of it. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jack, but my understanding is that, for example, for this one, heating companies, and it's $55.37. 37 if someone from one of these areas I typed in, which I'm from one of these areas, if they came in and typed in heating companies, and they were to click on one of these ads here on the right or on the top, if they were to click on one of those, they would be getting billed approximately $55.37 because this is on average what people are bidding per click on the word heating companies. So I like to look at this as just kind of another way of picking out keywords because something tells me that if people are paying that much for you know, this, this keyword that it's probably a pretty good keyword. So it's going to be one that I'm going to consider. And then, of course, I would just um, organize it in level of importance after I pick them all up. I would go through all of them and uh, organize them. And then I would put them on my flow chart here by level of importance. You know, most important being up here, least important being down here. And obviously heating companies is going to go under a category that has to do with heating. And then my, you know, my keywords that have to do with air conditioning, like train air conditioning, that's going to go under a category that has to do with air conditioning. Okay, is this making sense, guys? Give me a one in the chat box if this is making sense. Okay, cool. Awesome. So this is how I research it. And, and I like to call this content research because this is going to give me an idea of what to write about. And the purple boxes are really just to support our orange boxes because this is what we're most concerned with. So that's how I structure the website. And then each, of, each box here would be a separate page or post on your website, depending on if you're using WordPress or not. Um, I'm assuming you are. I'm assuming you're using Jack's awesome theme. So however you decide to set that up as posts or as pages, it's completely up to you. Um, but yeah, so that's how we do it. That's how we structure the website. Okay, that being said, website structure is incredibly important. It's one of the main factors that determines you know, who's going to show up in the uh, seven pack. So let me pull up a, another seven pack again. One of the main determining factors that who's going to show up here. And a lot of times we can we can control this just by our website structure. In low competition niches, there's many times we don't need to do much else. We don't need to go after backlinks um, or anything else. So that's why I always look for low hanging fruit. That's not always the case, but sometimes. So if we do need more, the next thing I like to look at is called citations. And a citation, I'll come back here, is simply the name of the business, the address of the business, and the phone number, exactly as it's listed on your Google, your Google Plus page. So come to the Google Plus page. Okay? So it should be listed exactly like this, Cedarburg Family Dentistry, this long address here, and the phone number. That's a citation. So citations work a little bit like backlinks. Um, for those of you who don't know what a backlink is, it's basically when another website has a link pointing back to your website on their website. So, you know, if I were to visit, like, I don't know, um, CNN.com and they were to link me over to Forbes.com, well, that would be considered a backlink for Forbes. They would have a link on CNN. So the same type of thing works with, um, with citations. If you have your name, address, and phone number listed on someone else's website, that's considered a citation. But just like backlinks, all citations weren't created equal. There's some citations that Google considers more important. 
and we can actually look this up. We use a tool called WhiteSpark to look this up. And um, I'll put a link to this in the chat box. So WhiteSpark is pretty cool, and they're pretty reasonable. They charge like $20 a month or something like that. But they let you go and type in your industry and your location, and I'm going to pull open one of the searches here and show you. Okay, they let you type in your location. Hopefully one of these listings will pull up, pull up here. That might have been too old of a search. Okay, there we go. All right, perfect. So they're going to show us who the top ranking businesses are. And not only that, this, is, this would be your seven pack right here. Not only that, they're going to show us how many citations they have. Over here where it says citation sources, this is how many citations they have. So this gives us an idea right off the bat that we're going to need, on average, anywhere between 100 and 200 citations. Always best to go on the higher side. You know, if, if the top three ranking people, you know, they have 177, well, probably going to want to get 180 or 190, okay? And that's going to really ensure that, you know, I'm really overly optimizing. But if that weren't good enough data, WhiteSpark does one even better. They show you exactly um, what citations to go after. I just pasted that link accidentally to, uh, I didn't paste it to everyone, so let me put that back in the chat box. There you go. Okay, so that's the link to WhiteSpark. You should see it in the chat box. Okay, so on this side you see view sources, right? So I want to look at West Dallas Dental Care. They're number one. I want to find out why. So I'm going to hit view sources, and WhiteSpark is going to tell me exactly every site that they're listed on. Okay, every site. So what I do is, is I export this CSV file into a nice spreadsheet, and then I start going on these sites and creating my, my listings on them. So I'll show you an example. They're on hotfrog.com here. So I'll pop over to hotfrog.com, and um, I would just add my business on here. See, it's free. Create your business profile now. Add your business. So I type in the business name, address, phone number, create a username and password, and there you go. I would have created my citation for if this is my client for this client. So you have to go through and you have to do that on every single one of them essentially. That sounds like it could get pretty time consuming, wouldn't you agree? To have to do 100 to 200 citations for, for your client? Well, for one, that's why sometimes I'm charging um, my setup fee here of $1,500 because it can get time consuming, especially if I'm going to do it all myself. Uh, but you may have guessed, I definitely outsource that part of it. Uh, I feel my time is valuable somewhere else rather than doing a repetitive task like creating a bunch of accounts. So who wants to find out who I outsource this to? Put a one in the chat box if you want my outsourcer. If enough people want it, I'd be willing to give it to you. Okay, a lot of ones. Okay, smart people, for sure, because definitely outsourcing is, is awesome. So well, here it is. I found this person on Fiverr two years ago. I'll paste it in the chat box. Um, her name's Virtual Girl 2010 is her username. But she'll do seven directory listings for five dollars. But she has extras down here. She'll do 45 listings in all for an extra 20 bucks. So for $25, you get 45 listings. Not too bad. I would say that it's well worth it. Um, so you can actually export this list that you got on here, export it, you can hand it off to her, and she'll go after and do them all for you. Okay? Click View Sources, Export, give her this CSV file, and she'll take care of it. All right, awesome. So that being said, do, do we have any questions for me? I'm going to take some time to answer some questions now. I'm going to grab a drink of water and then read through the questions here. Okay, uh, Jeff brings up a good, a good point. Some citations need phone verification, and yeah, that's, that's true. So if they do need a phone verification, um, she'll, she'll just skip it, and you'll have to go after it yourself, or sometimes these places will call later and phone verify it. 
So you just let the business owner know that people might be calling to verify your your business address and phone number, and uh, to just you know say, okay, cool. Okay, various how to get listed in surrounding cities. Google seems to only like to list you in the city that the business is in. Yeah, it depends. Um, if the competition wouldn't be so big, like say I'm in Cedarburg and I want to be lifted, listed in Grafton, if it turns out that Grafton's competition isn't too much, there's a good chance that I might be listed in Grafton too. But the safest bet is always to just go and get another address. All right. Uh, if you have a friend or family member that has an address over there, or if your client does, you know you can borrow their their address and list them over there. Um, so that would be that would be a way around it. We use that quite often. Are citations kind of like backlinks? Yes, they definitely are, David. They're they're pretty much they're just like a backlink for local marketers. It's kind of the same thing. Okay, Jimmy says if citations don't match, if the citations don't match, you should go in and you should correct them. Um, I can do a search for this once and just see if I can find um, an example to show you. All right, so let's take a look here. Okay, so I came into Merchant Circle. I found a citation for Cedarburg Family Dentistry. See, they have this little thing here, and every citation site is going to be a little bit different. They're not all going to be the same. For the most part, they look kind of the same, though. They have like a little thing that says, is this your business? Claim your business. And you click it, and then you can come in and you can change this stuff or delete it. So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure it has accurate information. You want to make sure that it matches what's on your actual local listing page. Okay, Fariba says you go after um, those who are already shown in the seven box. I don't. I like to go after people who aren't in the seven pack because I want them to see awesome results from the stuff I'm doing for them. I want them to see a great return on investment. So I always go after people who aren't there. Okay. Um, Let me jump in this one a uh, minute. Says, Do you hear me, uh, Paul? Yeah, sure, Jack. Okay. So yeah, the question comes up and couple of times is a backlink the same as a citation and citation is a business name an address phone number and I think also the website URL so a backlink can have those elements but they typically only have the website um, URL so a citation is more defined what Google to say okay this business has an entity. This business is does really exist, and they typically look at business directories or at websites which have which rank high, so which have an authority. So, a citation includes a link to a website, but has also other elements to make it a citation. Yep. So, I, 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 it works the same. You know, when you do backlinking SEO, you want to make sure you get a lot of blocks pointing to your domain but Google for 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 Google Plus they judge more do you have a valid business are you listing on the business directories which matters to your business so what you want to do and I, uh, I don't know if we go into it you want to go to your competition and see which business directories they use and those get counted by Google Plus or by Google, and you want to make sure that the business uh, which you are, which you are um, um, which you are helping to drive up high in Google use about the same business directories because you already know those business directory works. So I answered a couple of times in the chat box: Is backlink the same as citation? I said no, but I like to have it. Um, a little bit more explained because um, you said yes. So I, I want to make sure that it is clear. Yeah, yeah, not the same, similar. So yeah. citation is, is really defined as name, address, and phone number. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and what's cool about WhiteSpark too, um, Jack mentioned you want to go after you know the websites that have a higher authority. WhiteSpark will actually show you what those websites are, and it's labeled as domain authority. So. This is, you know, it says 21, 80. Um, so the ones that are higher have a higher authority. 
So 88, this is like really high. So you might want to prioritize which ones you go after. You know, you go after the higher ones first. Okay, and I got the question, does getting more backlinks help getting the inside the server box? I don't know if it helps. I would just concentrate on good citations. You, you want to concentrate on good citations which are relative to the business and getting reviews, okay? So, and also optimize the Google page. So, forget about blogging, forget about, I think you need to forget everything what you learned about SEO. You need to, for Google Plus, it's just a certain way to make that listing work. And it is not a hard way, but you need to do it in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, backlinks can definitely come into play if you go after something that's really competitive. Um, but for the most part, if you're really strong on your citations and you structure the website like we've talked about today um, with this structure, a lot of times you're going to find that you're, you know, you're going to fly perfectly with just those two things alone. Okay, and, and this is also what I want to add to the... Um to, to the training. If you go to any uh, local Team Jack uh, website, you see that we show mainly three categories. And that is not by accident, because we did all that study for you. What are the three main categories? What are the three main service what a business offers? So this is already Google Plus optimized. And with in mind that uh, you, you, you did your job for Google+. Plus. What you want to do is you want to add some local keywords to the in, inner pages so that you can go after local keywords. So uh, when you use local Team Jack, the, and the only thing what you, what you want to do is see which cities you want to rank for make a choice on those keywords and add those cities and, and that is mainly what you need that's more it's lesser than one hour work so with one click you have an optimized um, uh, website what works for Google uh, business so I, I just wanted to add that so awesome uh, I saw another good question someone asked can you bump someone out of the seven pack and yeah, that's basically exactly what you're going to do. You're going you're gonna to be the one that shows up, and the person who's you know, least optimized out of the seven is going to get bumped down one listing. So kind of just like regular SEO. Awesome. Okay. So that being said, um, there's, there's another thing I want to tell you about, and that is the actual optimization of your listing. I like to look at my competitor's page. So if I'm going after dentistry and I want to rank you know, for dentistry, I would go and I would look at some of the competitors in the seven pack for dentistry and really see what they've done to their page. Okay? You know, what categories have they gone after? You can see those right here. And they only have dentists, so that's the only one they went after. But if they had more, they would there would be more listed. You know, how they fill out their description here. How many reviews do they have? How many photos do they have? Go to the Photos tab. And I normally like the one up them. I like to at least do five to ten photos, but if they have, let's say, twelve photos, then I want to go after thirteen. I want to get thirteen photos. Okay? And I look at their post page. Have they, have they been posting? And I'll see if I can find a more optimized one to show you, because that one, they didn't really do too much. Okay, so let's check out this one. So if we come to the post page, you see they've, they've been posting in here. And you can think of this section kind of like your Facebook wall. You can use it for status updates. You can use it to talk about you know, different offers that you might have going on or educational stuff. You see they're using it to put up some videos. They're promoting some mouth guards. So look at that. And, and that will help you decide if you should be posting on your page. Look at their photos. They have five photos, so you know you want to have at least six or seven to you know, outdo them a little bit. So these are other factors that I take into consideration. Here's their other categories. If you click on it, when they have more than two, if you click on it, it'll show all of them. So they have dental clinic, cosmetic dentist, pediatric dentist, dental implants, periodontist, teeth whitening service. So I might think about going after some of those categories if I don't already have them. So I just like to reverse engineer what they're doing. 
and really it helps me figure out what I'm going to do. All right, so uh, any other questions here? You, get, you guys think you can do this? It's pretty, pretty straightforward, right guys? Awesome. All right, um, it's a maximum number of photos that's allowed. I haven't really seen a maximum, so I'm not sure I've never hit that. So you could just keep adding. Okay, I want to share with you guys about um, my mastermind group that I have. It's called Maps Mentor, and uh, it's it's really great. Jack's actually in it too. Um, but it's basically a full-blown training package that goes over everything in, in really great detail. Um, so it's pretty cool. I want to take you through it and show you it. And um, it's jam-packed. All of these are separate modules. So uh, we go through everything, researching the listings, creating the listing, uh, structuring the website, researching content, setting up the website, setting up the silo, um, creating call to action videos, optimizing the pictures, optimizing pages, uh, just a bunch of stuff. Uh, everything is really, really in depth. Um, I'll show you what the inside of them look like. Um, they're just very in depth. Even some of them have multiple videos inside, so uh, like you're not sure how to set up hosting, I've got you covered there. Um, but, it, it, but it's set up for even the advanced person. Like if you don't want to look through how to set up hosting, you can skip those videos, which is kind of cool. Um, but we got 24 modules in here, and it's just jam-packed. Everything you need to know about Google Plus Local. Um, so I've got that available for you guys as a resource, which is awesome. Um, but in addition, with that comes the membership to the Mastermind community, which I think is the most valuable asset. It's a community of over 500 other people um, who are you know, doing this same type of thing right along with us, and we bounce ideas off of each other. Um, we ask questions. We we talk about what's working. Uh, the other day, you know, people posted in here how to get in contact with Google. So you can actually get in contact straight with Google um, and, and talk to them on the phone if you're having trouble with your listing. So someone put a support contact in one of the tips and tricks sections. But you see the forum right now, and Jack's a member of this forum too. He's up. He's in here as well. But the forum community has um, 1,100 posts almost 1,200 posts, we're just about to tip over, um, and 520 members. So it's a very active community. Someone posted one hour ago. Um, so, you know, it's just an awesome place to bounce ideas off of each other and mastermind with each other. In addition, we've got lots of tools in there, um, things like the flyers that I hand out um, to help convince people to, you know, go with our service. Um, there's a little little update section over here where we talk about different stuff, um, calling strategies. Here's a cold calling script if you guys wanted to do that. Um, software for getting leads. Jack's got some pretty awesome software. Um, but I also have software in here too uh, that comes with the purchase if you wanted to you know, go with that and use that as well. Um, it works pretty cool. You come in and punch in your local business that you're interested in, punch in the location. And then what you can do, I only pulled a few records. Um, but you could let this keep running. And what it does is it's going to grab all the businesses on Google Plus Local, and it'll let you sort by the ones that haven't verified. And again, I could keep going. I mean, I could have hundreds in here, but I just stopped it early. And it's going to give you their name, their address, their phone number, what categories they're listed under right now, their website. It goes and finds all possible emails that they can find. It scrapes their website and uh, other stuff to find any emails that they might have. So you can email them right away. And chances are that if they're not verified, they haven't verified their listing, chances are pretty good they're not going to be ranking either. Um, so you can go through, you can export this as a CSV file, and you can go through and decide how you want to market, whether that be by email, direct mail, or uh, cold calling. Like I said, we've got scripts in here for all of that. But it's really just um, the full package. It's, it's the full solution. If this is a service that you guys are really serious about providing to your customers, and you're really serious about getting them some awesome results, um, this, this has everything you need. It's got the full-blown package and awesome support. I actually only opened this up well, when people asked me to um, for friends of mine, and, and Jack wanted me to, to open this up for you guys. You can see I haven't opened it up. If you look in the introduction section here, uh, two months ago was the last time someone introduced themselves because that's the last time I opened it up to people. 
um, I, I leave this on private invite because you know I'm active in this forum and I want to make sure that you know you guys are attended to and that I'm answering questions and um, so it's it's a very active forum because of that and uh, very very inclusive so it's pretty awesome um, I'll give you some details on that in addition uh, I'm gonna put together some bonuses for you guys as, as well you noticed on the pages that we have reviews right and I told you that getting that five-star rating is really important so I'm gonna offer you guys a bonus today if you decide you want to come in and pick this up and those are my review portals and you can choose to provide this with your package um, that you sell to the business owner along with your your Google Plus local service or Google My Business service or you can choose to make this you know maybe an upsell that you charge them for but the review portal works like this it's really clever so what we do is we have the business owner give them a link to this website to leave them a review and basically this is going to funnel out the bad reviews so they can come in here they can say okay I had a great experience or I had a bad experience if they click they had a great experience we're going to funnel them back over to the Google Plus page to write the review. If they click they had a bad experience though, we don't want them leaving that review on the Plus page. So what we do is we send them to just a regular form that collects some information um, from them, lets them rate us or whatever if they want, and then when they hit submit, it sends it off to the business owner so that the business owner can deal with it and you know do what they can to make the customer happy. So it's a pretty cool service. Um, we do this with our clients. It helps encourage people to leave reviews, and it helps filter out the bad reviews and make sure that we have positive ones coming into the listing page. And you could really use this um, for your other sites too. Like if your Yelp listing is affected by bad reviews, you could you could switch this great experience to link to the Yelp listing for a week or something like that. But I'll throw this in as a bonus for you guys. I've got two separate templates I use, and you can fully edit these to. Um, you know the company that you're working with but that's something special I decided to do for you guys um, for those who just know that this is for them they want to provide this service to their customers um, so you can get that as an extra bonus so here's the deal I, I had to settle on a price point that I thought was fair uh, I spent a long time you know preparing this and doing a lot of research and doing a lot of trial and error I um, worked with a lot of companies over the past few years. I remember when I was creating Maps Mentor, I was working on 70 listings at once. And um, that's really how I honed in on the Maps Mentor strategy because at the time when I created Maps Mentor, um, there was no up-to-date training. Uh, all the training was old and it didn't work anymore, the training that people had because Google put out their new social network, Google Plus. And this is when they switched it from Google Places to Google Plus. So the strategies that people were teaching about Google Places, they just didn't work well anymore. And I was having trouble ranking. So what I did was I used that opportunity when I was working with 70 listings to really hone in and, and find out what really worked. And I put, put it together inside of Maps Mentor um, for my staff to give them training materials and have them be able to come in and, and help me you know, set up all the listings because I outsource a lot of stuff. And um, I decided I would make it available to uh, people on an invite-only basis, which you guys are invited because Jack asked me to invite you guys. Um, so definitely give Jack a big thank you for that. Um, but here's the link for it. It's $149. It's a one-time payment. I don't do any upsells. You get everything you need for that, um, everything that we talked about. I'm going to put that in the chat box right now. Oh, Jack's got it. So Jack's got it in the chat box. Um, You'll land on this page here, right? And you can go through and check it out. Um, but basically, it talks about what we what we covered. Um, in addition, if you act now, you're going to get the bonus review portals. Um, let's talk about where to get those bonus review portals. That's something special I'm doing for you guys. So you'll want to email my support desk after you purchase, and just let me know that you purchased, and um, I'll shoot you a link to download those review portals. So this is the the email address to do that. Info at directorscutllc.com, and um, it, may, it may take me you know 24 hours or so to send the bonus out because um, I'm going to be going through all the support tickets. But this is definitely something that if you guys want to provide this service to your customers and you want to build an asset, you want to build something that works that gets them real leads, 
that gives them positive ROI, increases their bottom line, and you guys want that recurring income coming in. Remember, I charge my clients on average $1,000 per month. So, you know, you pick up a client or two, you're going to be off to the races and uh, you have a nice start. But um, if that's something you're interested in, then you definitely want to get in on this right now while we have it open. Uh, like I said, it's been two months since I opened this up to the public because uh, it's, just, it's just a private thing. Um, the mastermind community alone is well worth, I would say, I would say I would pay 10 times that price for the mastermind community alone. And I have paid upwards in the five-figure range to be a part of high-level masterminds. So you get that with this product automatically, uh, which is pretty cool. So we'll take some time now to answer questions, um, and, and we'll go through, and I'll stay on and answer questions until you guys uh, can't think of any more. Um, Carlos, Maps Mentor teaches what we just went over. It teaches a lot of what we just went over, but it teaches a lot more in detail. I mean, we've been on this call for almost an hour and a half now, so there's only so much I can fit in, um, but Maps Mentor goes over everything. I mean, we've got 24 modules in there, but in addition to that, I mean, think about the forum community. Think about all of the tools you're going to have access to. Uh, we talked about um, the templates, right, like the postcard um, or the flyer template we have in here. We've got scripts in there that you can use. Uh, we got a whole forum dedicated to selling or prospecting strategies that people share, uh, which is pretty cool. That's got 123 posts in it alone. So, I mean, you're really just going to find out what's working on a daily basis and, you know, what's working for other people. There's lots of people in here who've had excellent results. Um, I, had, I had John come on one of the last calls I did. Uh, he's a student of Matt's mentor. And he was saying how within, I think, like three weeks, uh, he picked up a couple clients. So really cool stuff. I mean, I love hearing stories like that. And um, it just makes you know, doing this worth it. Paul, we have one student. You have something to say, Jack? To yeah, we, ha we have uh, one student uh, on the line is Dino. And I don't, I, I'm going to unmute him and see if uh, he can come live on the call. Sure. Dino, do you hear me? Dino? Yes, I do, Jack. Okay. So, Dino. Yeah. I hope I said it. It's Dino. So, yes. um, I saw your comment and uh, you had some results and uh, I think all my members want to know what you did and what results are. Well, I'll, I, I actually took Paul's course back in January, and that's basically how I develop all my websites now using WordPress. And um, it, it works like a charm. They, they rank on page one, and um, they get in the seven pack. And that's as simple as it is. And it takes, like Paul said, about three to four weeks. And that's, I've been doing that since January for all my clients. That's awesome, Dino. Very cool. Do you I'm so happy to hear that. Do you do more than the website? Do you use special citations? Do you use uh, some other yeah, strategies? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, there's, yeah. yeah, there's actually a system I use um, for every client. It doesn't matter locally. I, I, I use the same system over and over and over. So essentially, uh, I can copy and paste it if you want and put it in the chat box and everybody can, if they follow it, they're, they're going to get great rankings for their, uh, for their clients. So. Yeah, it's probably the best thing to do. It's just to yeah, I think Paul has that all covered in the in his uh, training. But just wanted to know that you follow Paul's training and see oh, results. Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, the size awesome. of the whole bit with the categories. Yeah, it works like a charm. Okay, th th thanks, Dino. Yeah, thanks, Dino. That's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. So I got another question from Michel. Um, are the local team tech sites set up for Paul's silent matters? Yes. So if you go to any um, local team jack site, you will see that it's already split in the three main categories. But on top of that, it has four big buttons. And it's all by the idea to show the main categories where the website visitors land on the home page and they go uh, deeper speaking about that content so what you want to do is you want to if you do um, kind of a uh, SEO you want to add some city names to uh, uh, to the content so you target those specific keywords 
Do you want to uh, do you want to show one of your sites, Jack? Would that be helpful? Yeah, if I don't have to uh, take over the screen, but uh, if I can do that. Do okay, you? yeah, it's up to you. Yeah. Do you want me to make you presenter? I think most of you guys know my web. Do you guys want to see my website? But I'm just. I'm guessing everyone here has it, right? So I can uh, I can do it at the end of the webinar when I can take over the screen. Okay. So, but um, I like you to answer the you know more Google Places uh, questions. Yeah, I think. Awesome. Paulette says she's in. Awesome. Welcome, Paulette. I know we got a lot of people in already, so that's that's great. Um, so happy to hear about Dino too. That's really cool. Um, so I'm going to go through questions here. Okay, my recommendation for businesses with multiple locations. So that depends. If they have multiple addresses, you can definitely, you know, like in a different city, you can definitely set up like sub pages on your website. So for example, I might set up Bob's HVAC forward slash Milwaukee, Bob's HVAC forward slash Waukesha, and I would have separate landing pages for each page. So that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way of doing it is you could actually create a separate installation of WordPress on those subpages, and you could silo out an entirely different page. So that would be another way of doing it. And these are all things that we've talked about in the forum, actually. So when you get into the forum, you can actually pop into the search box here. You can type in um, multiple locations or multiple listings, and it'll pull open a list of searches. There's a bunch of them in here um, of the best way to handle that. See, best way to handle multiple locations. So um, we definitely cover stuff like that in the forum, and that's why a forum community is awesome uh, because you have that support there, not just from me, but from other members who are doing this, which is pretty cool. So okay. I'm going to enter a URL in the chat box, and you guys, uh, maybe Paul, you can also open that page. Yeah, sure, I'll open it up. So what you see here is the, the three main categories. From a dentist, but I can put any uh, website up. You see the general density, the cosmetic, and the store. Those are already the three main categories. And on top of, uh, just above it, you have the four subcategories. So those are all split up in the main categories. So that follows Paul's flow chart. And, and we didn't speak before, you know, about this a half year ago when I created those sites because I know how Google works and Paul knows how Google works. And I know what ranks. So they are all optimized in that way. That's really cool. And if you, so, see, the, so you see the read more button, they go to the sub page and on those sub pages, you might want to, so that those have about 500 words content, and those you might to add some local keywords to it. So with that, you, you, you have to silent it, and you have the targeting the keywords. That's all what you need to do. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. This is set up perfect for exactly what we're doing. Very cool. Awesome. Well, it's cool that everyone could see that. Um, that way everyone kind of understands exactly, um, you know, that, that this structure will work exactly that same way. You know, these would be the categories. And then as it would go in, if you click on it, you could link to your other pages as well. So we're definitely set up for that here. It's a um, really great looking theme. So where can we put the phone number on the back end? There is the phone number and address and it, and it automatically get shown. So this is very good for citation. Every page has the, has the address and the phone number and the business name automatically yeah. because it already entered once. Uh, it, you entered it once in the back end and very important. So this is, Paul, you didn't address it, but I, so very important is for citations, you want to have exactly, exactly all the same information. So with local team deck, we enter it once, and it's all displayed on the, uh, on the same way. Yep. Yeah, it's very important for citations to match, um, and it's important for them to be on every page, which is um, great that the theme does that. Awesome. 
So I don't want to make it my presentation, but I know if you have question about can I use local team jack? Yes, they are optimized for that. Perfect. Okay, um, I'm just going through. Anise says she's a member. Awesome, Anise. Just going through more questions. If you guys have questions, throw them in the chat box. Okay, if you add a tracking phone number, how does it affect the phone numbers? Um, so you're going to have to go into your citations and you're going to have to update it with your tracking phone number because, uh, as Jack mentioned, it's important that they all match. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of going into WhiteSpark, finding out where you're listed, going into those citations and changing the phone number to the tracking phone number. But I definitely think it's worth the time and effort um, to, to go ahead and do that. Um, you know, if, if it were me, I would go ahead and do that because it's just totally worth it to be able to track what you're doing, to be able to have that proof of the leads that you're bringing in for them. So I wouldn't skip that step. And Jack, you have a you have a tracking portal for them for tracking numbers, right? Correct. Okay. So if you, I didn't put the link in it because it, I I'm not here to sell you something, but. Uh, from call tracking portal, um, yeah, I, I have my own on call tracking, call tracking with lead tracker jack. Okay. So, so yeah, if, so if I mean, you have a question about it, you can send a support ticket, but I, I just want to, to, to have that Google Plus training as much as possible. Uh, awesome. So um, I saw someone said, how soon for correct maps on mobile sites? Yeah, send me support ticket about that because uh, I'm not aware of that problem. Okay, they're referring to your team. I thought they were talking about uh, Google Maps. Um, okay, uh, if a business had a Google Plus listing, do they automatically have a Google My Business listing? Great question. So this is a Google Plus listing. Google My Business is basically just an interface that makes it easy for you to get a Google Plus listing. So we kind of use that word interchangeably. So basically this is, this would be the Google My Business platform right here. This is Google My Business. And when you sign up here, like we showed you how to do, that's going to create your Google Plus page. So I know it's a little confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. Google My Business is the interface in which you'll create your business's Google Plus page. So, Paul, with all those changes from Google, do you keep your training up to date? Yeah, great question. Yeah, I mean, I've been, Maps Mentor has been available now for, I would say, a year and a half, and um, we just constantly update it. So that's one nice thing about the forum as well, is every time something changes or something happens, you know, we're in the forum right away, updating and, and talking about what's happening. And you'll notice here on the home page, see this little news section? Um, you can see right here, Google Plus Local is now Google My Business. Watch this important update. So constantly adding updates in, which you know definitely is something I am always concerned about when I buy a course. So uh, keep in mind two things, okay? Google will exist forever. They will never, um, they will never throw away Google Places, Google for for business, they have established an identity. So you want to be uh, become an expert in it, but because Google and Facebook and LinkedIn they change all the time, so you want to get connected to a source which you can trust. So you don't need to study so much hours on what the changes are. Just you want to have a source which you can trust and tells what to do. So, so I will be your guide for AdWords, but Paul is the guy for Google Plus, for Google for Business. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, this this is what I do. I mean, I'm like you, Jack. I'm out here in the trenches doing this stuff every day. You know, this isn't this isn't some theory course. This is developed from hours of labor figuring out, you know, how to get my customers ranked on the maps listing. So. As I see stuff change, I definitely update it. And because I'm out there doing this stuff every day, you know, I'm I'm 
I'm catching those changes pretty fast, faster than most people do. Awesome. Let's go through more questions here. If you guys have anything for me, just uh, let me know. Let me see if let me know if you see anything, Jack, that I haven't answered. Okay, uh, for my setup fee, do I provide the content? That's a good question. So uh, Oliver is referring to the actual, you know, 300 word articles or whatever on the website. So that just depends. Usually I include it, but when you work with certain niches, they want to do it. Um, like I worked with a bankruptcy attorney who wanted to write his own content. He was good at it, and he wanted to make sure that his customers were getting good information. So in that scenario, we, you know, we talked to him about the keywords that we're going after, and, and he wrote the content. So it just depends. Um, every situation is different, but most commonly, they want us to take care of it because you know they're running a business. They don't really have time to do it most of the time. That's a great question. So a business get more calls from a Google Places, Google My Business listing than SEO. If your focus has been SEO, you are in danger. You are in danger that Google changed the rules. You are in danger that somebody else put more effort in it. But a local business, if you can put reviews in it, you have citations, if you know what to do, your ranking is much lesser in danger. Your, your company get much better calls because only serious people, they, they, they call uh, in Google Places listing. So you have a much happier client. Yeah, and I mean, it's just better leads that come through because with SEO, you've got people who are searching for homework projects. Um, you know, they might just want to learn about, you know, how much a dentist makes. But with the local listings, you're only getting local results. You're only triggering, you know, results. This is like a yellow pages almost. People come in here because they're looking for someone to call. They're looking for someone to get the service performed like right now. And a lot of times, people will just call right away. They won't even look at the website. They won't even come into it. Some people will, but some people won't. Some will just pick up the phone and call right away. So that's really the power in, in this. And it also shows up extremely well on mobile devices. Um, if, you're ever, if you ever have some time, check it out on your mobile phone. So it shows up on your mobile phone too, which is cool. And it turns into a tap to call button. The phone number does. So people aren't having to write it down on their hand or anything like that. So that's incredibly important for businesses that are more mobile. Think of things like a towing company who, you know, when, when people break down, they're out on the road and they need a towing company. So they have to go on the web and search for it. So if they can just tap and call, you know, that's a lot higher chance at conversion. Does Google My Business listings always appear above the normal organic listings? Not always. Um, most commonly, though, it does. And if it doesn't show um, above them, it usually shows like one, it'll show maybe one listing or two listings, and then it'll show. So it always shows at the top. Um, but most commonly, it does show at, you know, right at the top, at the very top. That's a good question, too. Okay, uh, any more questions for me? Okay, my setup fee. Someone has a question about my setup fee. My setup fee mostly covers having to build out a brand new website, um, having to you know set up the theme, having to silo it out and get the content, and having to go in and fix their citations up or create more. That's that's why I charge a setup fee. I mean, as you can see, you can see how it could start to get to be a little time consuming, and we charge a setup fee so that we're able to outsource some of that process, which we do talk about that in the training about outsourcing, so uh, it's definitely covered in in these modules. Great questions. So the tracking phone number and all the directory listings is the same, but it's different than the company's actual phone number. Yep, that's right. As long as it matches everything, you're good to go. But the phone number you actually own. Okay, uh, any other questions? you see anything that I maybe haven't answered, Jack? I, I know you're answering two in the chat box. So, 
uh, how how much time does it take somebody can feel and how I, I master the training so feel comfortable to go to your training material and help a client yeah I mean that's that's going to be varied based on you know how fast you consume content but I would say on average you know if you were to come in here and spend you know a good day going through it you're going to feel really comfortable with it and to be honest you're going to feel you're going to refer back to this as you have a client too you know this is something that you're going to come back into as you're setting it up and you're going to say okay how do I do research again and you're going to pop into the researching module and you're going to check it out right you're going to come in here and and check out the you know the rules about researching and you're going to say okay well, how do I structure my site again and you're going to pop back in so you'll feel pretty comfortable with it going through it one time and then you'll refer back to it again as you get a client and once you actually have a client you know we're talking about two to three weeks on average to rank after you verified the listing is this a one-time fee Paul or you have monthly payments for this training this training that I have is a one-time fee uh, it's just hundred and forty nine dollars so I've kept it affordable for you guys um, it's a one-time payment no upsell so you get everything you need guys with that one price so I want to make sure everything's completely transparent and of course you get the the bonuses if you decide to hack now um, the uh, review portals okay I think you you all you most questions are about Google Plus okay and that is fine but as least as valuable is that you get a system to get those reviews so Paul has made a portal available that you can use to to uh, help local business to get reviews and those stars the golden stars are so important so you need to have a system and that is where most local business are struggling with to get those reviews and with having those portal it justify you to to charge a monthly fee so if you so if you charge $99 per month it's one month and a half that justify the one hundred forty nine dollars for the for the whole knowledge you get not only for that portal yeah definitely I mean it, it's just really a no-brainer for sure if, if this is something you guys are serious about doing you know this is this is a full business in a box this is the confidence you need to go out there and take on clients and and feel confident with the ability to give them the results that you want to get them and, help them get a good ROI because let's face it when you're bringing a company ROI they're gonna to wanna to stay with you for a long time you know it's they don't want those leads to stop coming in so they're gonna keep paying you every month okay I see a question from Tom um, if someone changed the ownership or has a new name uh, should we set up a brand new account for citations yes yeah, so, I mean if they if they change any information in their in their citation, and which again is the, the business's name, address, or phone number, you definitely want to reflect um, that change in all of their local directories. Okay, um, just, I'm just going through more questions here. So to get the bonus, what do they need to do? To get the bonus, all you need to do is email me your receipt at info at directorscutllc.com. Can you put that email in the chat box? Yes. And then yeah. after that? Yep. So that's the email. Um, again, just so give you, me some time to send it out because yeah, I'll be sending them out manually. That bonus justify the $149. That makes you, that sets you apart to other people. Uh, marketers would do would do uh, Google Place listing. They stop with uh, citations. They don't optimize the site. They don't have local team jack. They probably don't know which citation to use and they don't have a review portal. Definitely. Yeah. You need to stand out from everyone and um, this gives you a uniqueness that you can add to it. So definitely valuable bonus that um, you should definitely take advantage of and and use that to set yourself apart from the crowd. 
yeah that you need you need a review system so I think by now you know you understand that reviews are important but it's not that easy to get those reviews so you need a system for that and Paul has invested in that to make it work definitely yep this is um like I said, this is basically my business inside and out, exactly how I run it, exactly how I work with my clients and how we get them the results. So you literally need to just follow along with me in the video training and, you know, set it up. It's all there for you. I, I wish I had this system when I was, you know, getting started because it would have um, cut hours and weeks and months off of my, my learning curve. So can you tailor the reviews for five stars? I think you can, correct, Paul? Can you say, can you say, don't post negative reviews? Is that is that able in your portal or not yet? Yeah, that's that's exactly what the portal is. So if they come in here and click, I had a bad experience. We're not going to send that over to the to the five star rating because obviously that's going to reflect poorly on our business listing. So instead, we're going to send them somewhere else. And I also have training that goes along with these portals. I'll teach you guys how to set it up, which you'll get um, with the bonus if you act now. That comes along with it. Yeah. I like that portal a lot, so that's... Yeah, it's definitely... I, 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 don't have it in my, I don't have it in my arsenal, so... I know quite a bit about Google, um, but uh, I like that portal a lot. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'll have to send them your way. Someone wanted to see the, the training dashboard again. Here it is. Definitely um, really well covered with everything. I mean, even on getting clients and the forum, of course, is just super valuable because everyone's in there interacting. So that's cool. Uh, a lot of people in already. We've got quite a few people in, so that's cool. Uh, how long are we going to leave this offer up, Jack? Do you do you have any sort of time frame that you're looking at? I see a lot of people asking that. Yeah, we will put the the replay up, and we will uh, uh, send a link with it. Um, I think you have to judge it. When would you like to? Uh, achieve your goal. Is that something this week? Is it something next week? Is it something next month? So when I, are you guys ready to start? So, That's a great question. So, so um, earlier today I sent you and I in the beginning of the webinar I showed you what a ladder can do. One ladder you send to 60 businesses who don't have a website. With Site Lead Finder, you easily find those business addresses, easily, within a minute, you export 60. Within a minute, you export 60. I will show you Tuesday, okay? You send out that letter, okay? It, it, had, it resulted in five clients, okay? So, so, I'm not saying you will get five clients every time. But let's say you get one client. It takes you one hour to send that letter for 60 uh, clients. You get, let's say you get one client, and that one client resulted in a $500 uh, instantly, uh, one-time payment, and, and $19, $19 if you also offer the, uh, the Google uh, for business training. Uh, service. So, think about this. Are you able to spend one to two hours per day to get a client? If you do that, if you can do that, you are in business. You have a high chance that you achieve your goal. And I'm going back. What is your goal? Okay? So, it's not something about, can I do this next week? Yes, you can do this next week, okay? But why not, if I, so I'm a little bit maybe different, if I can do something today, I'm not doing that tomorrow, okay? Because with this ladder and with local team jack, 
plus the Google um, for Business training, you have all what you need to justify the one-time setup and the monthly service. So this has put you in a position that you feel comfortable to ask $99. You keep the hosting on yourself, you buy the domain on yourself, you put in phone tracking numbers on it, and um, you put a phone tracking number on it, and you offer Google for Business training as service. So you service, and you got the training from us. So that ladder is in the local Team Jack members area. I put it out there as a text file. It's easy to use. You change just the business name, okay? So it's, you have all what you need. The question is, how much effort do you put in, in it, okay? I never say that the money will come fly to you. You have to put you have to put your hands out of your pocket and you put effort in it. But if you feel, okay, you need to, uh, you, you set up your goal. And once you have set up your goal, you don't feel it as work anymore. You just do everything that is needed to reach that goal. And that is how I drive my business. And that is how you achieve things that you wouldn't have imagined you, that you could achieve. What would make a difference if you have every day you sign up a new client and add $99 monthly? After 30 days, you have 30 times $99. How much would that change uh, in, your, in your life? 30 times $99. Is three thousand dollar per month on on recurring. I'm not. I'm. Not, I don't care so much of one time fee. You know, it's it's five hundred dollars. It's nice. Thirty times five hundred dollars. It's nice. But I want you to be in position that you don't need to work a week and you still get paid. That is, I like to be in, and that is what the internet market is. That you can work whenever you want. Doesn't need to be that you're lazy. No, you are. You have freedom. You don't need to work for somebody else. You are in control. Great point for sure. I mean, you know, decide on what you're going to charge. Ask yourself, how many clients do I need to live the lifestyle I want to lead to, to live? And that should be your first goal. I mean, maybe if you're working a job right now, decide on how much you're making per month right now and how many clients you need to, to hit that first initial goal. And that will give you your number. You know what to aim for. All right. Anything else that we, um, that we need to cover, Jack? Or? No, I think um, I really appreciate all your attendance. Uh, it has been great, and I'd like to thank Paul for all his content, um, it's up to yeah, you guys. For me too. It's up to you guys what you want to do, how you want to achieve those those goal. I really hope the replay will uh, will succeed. Uh, so hope we don't have a problem with that. And uh, if you have questions, you know I'm around in the Facebook group. And if you like this program, if you like this training session, I also would appreciate. Uh, if you would leave an, uh, a note in the Facebook group, so others can see, you know how you how you have um, how you how you liked it. So with that said, I like to thank everybody on the call, and I like to thank to uh, Paul for sharing all his knowledge. Thanks, Jack. It was a pleasure. Have a good night. You too.